So we have a series of video to debunk this notion that when things are working out for you, right? When you are having financial success, um, all kinds of success, however you define success, many people think that is uh, God's approval. And that means, um, and that's how it's been communicated a lot in many Christian circles. So the question is, does having success or have, making progress in, in your life, is that a sign of God's approval? Or I would say, is that a sign that God is with you? Is that a sign that God has blessed you? Now, I've seen a lot of people, even myself in the past, where because of the success, right, good things happening, maybe in school, you're a student, right? Or maybe you, you, know, you just graduated, got a job, or you have a business, it's going well. You got promoted at work. Your children are going to college, going to medical school, engineering schools, whatever, right? Uh, your, your son, your daughter is now an athlete. And, and, and we say, yeah, that, God is good. So that's our definition of God is good. Yes, God is good, right? But that is really not a definition of God is good. That is really not the, 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 the center of the goodness of God. The death of Jesus is not a, not, wasn't the beginning of financial freedom, but it was the beginning of something. It was the beginning of something that money cannot buy. And that's why Christianity is so unique. That's why you got to understand this. If you don't get this, you're going to struggle. Whether you, if maybe you're not a Christian, you're going to be looking at them say, you're going to be looking at Christianity from a different perspective. And if you're a Christian, you may not know what you have. You may not know even what being a Christian is. It's not a religion. You may be professing yourself a Christian, but you're not even a Christian. How, what is the proof? Let me ask you this. What is the proof that you are a Christian? Or I guess, what makes a person a Christian? Put it that way. Yeah, not really proof. What makes a person a, a Christian? We're going to try to answer that in another, in another series. But a lot of, I meet a lot of young fellas, a lot of young fellas right now. He totally, totally get it wrong. And I understand because I used to be there. I used to be there. Because m many times it's how we grew up, right? It's how we grew up. You, many of us, many people, you mean, you're watching this video right now. You grew up in a Christian church going home. And we grew up with this notion, this information that are not properly Proven that, that in light of Jesus Christ, they might sound religious. You know, let me show you guys this one. You know, when, when, when Mary Magdalene and the women, the, the other women, after Jesus died on the third day, they wake up, they woke up very early in the morning. They said, Let us go anoint the Lord. Right? They had good intentions. They said, Let, Let's go anoint the Lord. So in their mind, they thought the Lord was still there. Good intention, but bad practice. When they got there, they met, saw a man, saw someone, an angel. And he asked them the question. He said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He didn't, he didn't congratula congratulate them. Hey, y'all did good. Y'all came out here to anoint the Lord. Good, good, good women. You know, I, I used to look at that story from, man, these women woke up early. They, they, they had their pious and God loving. Man, I got to be dedicated. He said, no, he, he didn't tell them. He's like, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Many things we're doing in church today is looking for the living among the dead. It might look good. It, I mean, we can, I mean, many things we might be doing from, right heart from the right perspective but you can be hustling backwards 
And that is real. Those women had good intentions, but because they didn't really understand the, the, the plan of Jesus Christ. They didn't really understand the, the scripture. Because if they did, look at let's let's look at this, right? In in the book of Luke, this is after Jesus, you know, after in, interacting with some of them, he you know, and this is what he told them. He met one of his disciples. Um that we are after that incident, this incident I described happened. He, and two of his disciples were going and complaining, like, and Jesus came along and walked with them, right? This is Luke 24. If you read them from, you know, from 17 down, and then they were talking, and Jesus said, hey, wh- what are you talking about? They're like, man, are you a stranger in Jerusalem? Don't know what has happened these days. He's like, what? He said, yeah, concerning Jesus Christ, man, he's a good man, you know, and, and they killed him, and, and all the other went on and on and on. And they said, we, 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 we were hoping that he would be the Savior, you know? And what is that definition of Savior? They're probably thinking about Roman Empire because then they were under the Roman you know, rule. Like, we, we hope they're going to save us. Now, they say that it said the Savior. They said the word Savior, but their definition of Savior is different from what Jesus calls Savior because for Jesus, Savior meaning means he had to die. Now, the question is, is, is his death a new concept, something that was hidden? We're going to find out. So let's go to 25, verse 25. I love this part. And then Jesus said unto them, O fools and slow of heart. <laughs> he called them fools. He said, slow of heart to believe all that the prophet have spoken. Whoa, Jesus said, hey, listen, you guys are fools and you guys are dull in believing. Not necessarily hearing, but in believing. Y'all, y'all dull and heart, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Wow, he's like, so the prophet has spoken these things were already prophesied. That means the salvation was prophesied as death and resurrection. But they have their own definition of, of salvation. The same way, right? We had a definition of the blessing of God. And it could differ from what it, not, not just it could, it, to many degree, it differs from what the scripture defines of self as, as the blessing of God. Here we go. 26. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Now, if, and, and he said, I'm beginning at Moses. Let me read it from the Amplified Version. I'm going to go to uh, verse 25, verse, 20, verse 26. Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and only then to enter his glory, then beginning with Moses and throughout all the writings of the prophets, he explained and interpreted for them the things referring to himself in all the scripture. Wow, he said, was it not necessary? That means if you really, really understood what you read or what has been taught, you will know that it was right necessary that means that one of the proof that you can check for anyone claiming to be the christ is that hey you must die and you must rise from the dead he said said, these things that were already spoken by the prophets now another readers will go back to the old testament and begin to Old Covenant in the, in, in the, from Genesis to Malachi and see where, it, where, was it there that Christ will suffer? And then after then, he will enter into his glory. Now he said, then beginning, verse 27, beginning from Moses, that means from Genesis to Malachi, Genesis, Esther, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and throughout all the writings of the prophets, he explained the scripture to them. Wow. So that means that over decades and generations and and centuries, the scripture was being taught outside Jesus' perspective. The information that was passed around from generation to generation was not in line with what Jesus was talking about. But it was written there, but the way it was communicated, because he said, was it not necessary? That means 
if you really understand the message, you will know it was necessary. That this is not an accidental thing. That this was necessary. Again, we're talking about money. And here we are. Back to basics. The fundamentals. Because when you get this, you will stop being a victim of religious robbery. Of, of Jesus merchandising. Because you know. And now when we get to really what, what Jesus did for you. Is what money cannot buy. You cannot buy, get the, the, bless, the blessing of God with money. You understand that the blessing of God is, is eternal life. Is the Holy Spirit. 